Hello, in today's RKO Scoop, my top three headlines are as follows. Headline number one comes from London, where the Magna Carta has recently enjoyed its 799th birthday. It was signed on the 15th of June, 1215, and next year we'll see this uh, very important document turn 800 years old. This is a very important document because uh, the Magna Carta, or the Great Charter, was the beginnings of, um, I suppose, civil liberties, as it were, in certainly in England, if not in Britain as a whole. Um, it is uh, an Angevin, oh, Angevin Charter, sorry, um, signed uh, in Latin, also written in Latin, and signed by King John himself at Runnymede on the bank of the River Thames uh, on the 15th of June 1215 and it, it began to lay out the fact that uh, the rule of law and not just the will of the king would uh, would govern the, uh, the direction of everyday life in this kingdom or in these kingdoms as it were in Britain. Um, it's, it's, it was a baby step in the grand scheme of things but unless it was a big step breaking the absolute rule of a monarch um, and it was a big step towards what we now think of as being, I suppose, modern Western democracy. Lots of people point to France, and lots of people point to, for example, the Declaration of Independence in the US uh, and, uh, and associated documents um, in the US. But um, the Magna Carta really does deserve its place in that, in that uh, timeline. And uh, this story is actually not only about the birthday of that document, but also the fact that it's going to be restored and put on display. Um, uh, as I say, in London. So um, there are actually some people who are calling for a Runnymede um, sort of museum, a place to actually really mark uh, this event on the banks of the Thames. But for now, that's not really on the cards. However, this is a very important little document and a very important um, step in terms of it being put on display. So I thought I'd highlight that. That's headline number one. Headline number two um, is actually with regards to a historian um, uh, who is challenging uh, a, uh, the, the, the idea that the Santa Maria has been found off the coast of Haiti. Uh, Haiti sorry. Um, Barry Clifford uh, announced to the Explorers Club in New York that he had discovered the famous wreck of the Santa Maria um, off the coast. But a Portuguese American historian called Manuel Rosa, uh, or Rosa uh, has um, said that the discovery uh, is actually impossible because the ship never sank. Uh, essentially, both um, men based their discovery or their challenging of the discovery on interpretations of Columbus's diary and whether or not uh, what he's talking about is the ship sinking or the ship being dragged onto land and then um, either shot by cannon or dismantled and turned into, uh, into houses and huts for the crew. Um, this is the kind of argument I suspect which is going to be very hard to prove and I, and I further suspect that really only a continued examination of the wreck of, ha of Haiti uh, is going to, to go somewhere towards resolving this. But no, it's an interesting argument. Uh, people are, are, um, uh, are drawing battle lines around the Santa Maria and whether or not it actually, uh, well, has been found or can be found indeed. So that's headline number two. Headline number three is with regards to a, uh, a jobs boom um, in the US, uh, in fact in North Dakota, um, ahead of uh, essentially oil uh, drilling developments and speeding up of, of the oil, um, uh, oil extraction uh, industry uh, means that actually more and more jobs are available for archaeologists. Now this, this story actually comes from an Australian uh, newspaper but um, it seems that, uh, that the Australians there are getting just as excited as, as uh, Australians, sorry, archaeologists there, <laughs> are getting just as excited as archaeologists in the US. Um, as actually as the article says, um, this is a high, uh, produced a rare jobs bonanza in American archaeology, a field in which many highly educated professionals hop from project to project around the world and still struggle to make a living. So I thought that was worthwhile highlighting a bit of a jobs boom for archaeologists, a rare jobs boom. So that's headline number three. So there you go, those are my top three headlines for, uh, well, for today. Uh, for those headlines and some more uh, news stories from the past few days, all you need to do is check out the links as ever in the video information just below. Um, there's plenty for, uh, there for you to read and as ever it's good stuff. 
Now uh, this week I'm going to be filming with a school in North Shields. We're doing um, another World War One drama film with a different school. So uh, I'm going to be busy all week, but hopefully you'll get a video from Mr. Reese Booth himself uh, a little later this week. Uh, nonetheless, whatever you're up to uh, during the course of the next few days, do take care, and I shall see you when I next see you. Bye-bye.